What's up, Safe Moon Army? Here's a copy of my AMA from last Safe Moon Sunday in case any of you missed it. Apologies about the spotty audio from time to time, but it's still a good listen as we went over lots of different questions. This video will be styled differently than my others, but fear not as my next video is right around the corner. All right, well, it's that time. Uh, what's up, Safe Moon Army? Welcome to this Mooncast AMA. I'm Safe Moon Mark, and I'm here to help answer any underlying questions you guys have and get another chance to talk Safe Moon with everyone here. I'm joined by Vino. As you see, he'll be sharing some words at the end of the event. Uh, this is not an official Safe Moon AMA, but I know how important Safe Moon Sunday is for many of you, and I wanted the chance to still bring everyone together. Okay, so to start, I'm going to address a few popular questions I've seen, and right over that, I'll open up the conversation to everyone. The first one I've seen a lot is, what happens to our Safe Moon tokens once the blockchain is live? How is the conversion going to work from tokens into coins? And um, so many projects have merged from being a token on top of a blockchain to becoming a native coin on their own blockchain. The process is understood and reliable, so I I'm not too worried about how all that will play out. Normally, I'd have a big math-based answer to give everyone, but I'm, I'm going to be saving that for a video. So for now, just know that the process is not too difficult, and it will not pose a threat to SafeMoon down the road. Another popular one I've seen around is, will we be able to move other tokens and coins that do not get reflections over to the SafeMoon wallet? So as we said, we're not going to be touching much on the wallet, but all I have to say is a coin does not need to have reflections built in to be held on the wallet. Exactly which coins uh, are going to be held there, I don't know. But with the upcoming releases, I'm sure much more information will come out to answer those soon. All right, just a couple more. Why are the reflections we see on your website greater than the ones I am actually receiving? So th this, is a good, this is a good question. I, I threw out a disclaimer on the bottom of the site saying that it uses global volume in the calculation. And as we know, currently, only the volume of the exchange you hold SafeMoon on is used to provide reflections. So if you're trying to calculate your daily reflections, you should use the volume of the exchange you hold SafeMoon on. So PancakeSwap for Trust Wallet users, BitMart for BitMart users, etc. And you'll get the correct values back then. A uh, the question relating to bridges. Do reflections in provable SFM come from transactions on Ethereum? And can I explain a little further how that all works? With the current state of the bridge, Ethereum does not have a 10% tax when moving between wallets or when buying or selling. All transactions that occur on Ethereum do not trigger the tax. Therefore, they do not trigger reflections. Reflections in provable SFM on Ethereum are not influenced at all by transactions on Ethereum, only transactions on Binance Smart Chain. Currently, the vault gains reflections like any other holder. This is how PSFM also gains reflections. When the vault receives its reflections, it mints provable SFM in parallel on the other side. So the rate at which PSFM is minted is based solely on transactions from Binance Smart Chain alone. When someone sells all of their safe moon, there is sometimes a remnant left over in the wallet. Is that person still considered a holder or not? So technically, yes. The number of holders that BSC scan shows includes everyone with more than zero safe moon in their bags. So users who have tried to sell out but have a small remaining few safe moons stuck are counted as holders only when looking at BSC scan. Another popular one I might as well go over, I, I do get asked this a lot, um, is how much SafeMoon is needed to make a living off selling reflections. And I, I, can't, I can't tell anybody how much SafeMoon they should own. That's entirely up to you and how much faith you have in the project and the upcoming catalysts. But it is a fact that you earn $50 per day per billion SafeMoon that you own for each billion dollars of daily volume. From there, I urge you to do some math, plug in some numbers to my website even, and decide from there what size SafeMoon bag gives you an optimal amount of reflections for what you believe the volume will be in the future. So those are, those are the main ones. Uh, now I'm going to start accepting requests to come up and speak. Uh, if you cannot speak, just put your questions in the event stage chat room. If you see someone else that has already asked your question, just react to it so we can better see the, the popular ones going around. Uh, how about you, Kasher? Do you have anything to say? Hey, Mark. How are you doing? Um... First, thanks for everything you're doing. Congrats on your, your new position with our SafeMoon team. Um, just a quick question. I know uh, you had uh, said something about the Project Phoenix. Any, can you touch on Project Phoenix or give us some insight? Uh, I, I can't give any information that's not already publicly available from the team. That wouldn't be uh, too good, but Project Phoenix is uh, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was. I'll say that. All right, thank you. Hey guys, uh, first of all, thanks for all your work. I know it's been a hard days for you guys, but I know you're going to reach out to them all in the future. So I have one question. I don't know if you guys will be able to answer, but are there plans for a safe moon uh, marching, something like that? 
I'm pretty sure the, the blockchain and the goals that we're going to is pretty public knowledge. So yes, I would say yes. Right. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited for the Safe Moon Smart Chain. I don't know if that's what it's going to be called, but definitely something to look forward to for sure. How's it going, General Holt? Uh, I think he probably just answered my question with the other question that just popped up. That's what I was curious about. If you guys could uh, touch on the, the smart chain, is that to potentially down the road put other coins under it? Nope, that's definitely something uh, we're looking into. Okay, good deal. That's, that's one of the things I'm most excited for personally. What's up, Diamond Hands? What's up, guys? All right, so um, my question is, when we transfer over to the wallet, will we start to get reflections from every exchange, or are we still going to be tied to the exchange we bought from? Thanks. Um, at least for right now, uh, when the, whenever the wallet goes live, we will still be using uh, re reflections from volume on PancakeSwap, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, that, that's what I believe is, is going to be happening. But in the future, we are trying to condense the volume down to be global so everyone can share in the reflections and burn. But... For for right now, yeah, it's uh it's gonna be tied to pancake swap. Hey Mark yeah. team, thanks for putting this together. But uh more specifically, Mark, when we're looking, you know, I, I was an early follower of yours, you put on a lot of great content. But since your your inclusion to the team now, has there been any progress or insight to the map, the numbers that you've done? Was there any new insight gain that would adjust or you would have to account for any modifications to the map if you you've already done? Thank you. Um, no, that's a good question. So there is a there's one fact that I might as well touch on now. So in the, the original video, you see the one quadrillion used a lot, uh, meaning the total supply. Uh, recently, in a few of my recent videos, I've alluded to this not necessarily being one quadrillion forever, because there are some wallets that are excluded from reflections. So there, there is a slight modification you would you would make if you want to get exact results, which is instead of um, if you're doing my reflections calculation, which is volume times the number of safe moon you own divided by 20 quadrillion, instead of 20 quadrillion, you would multiply it by 20 times the number of safe moon that can receive reflections. And right now, that's all of the safe moon except the ones held in locked liquidity and in Bitmart. So right now, considering Bitmart has so many tokens, it actually does raise the amount of reflections you gain for volume by 5%. I didn't include it in the uh, basic um, formula because it's very complicated and there's a lot of factors that change a lot and one quadrillion gives you a really good average for it but yeah no that's a good question so if you're trying to get super technical the one quadrillion is replaced by the number of safe moon that can receive reflections and at this point it's about 944 trillion but the liquidity will unlock so th these values aren't constant how's it going mg hey guys can you hear me yep all right uh thanks for putting this on um, I know, Mark, you spoke about it earlier when you said the uh, general questions about transferring over to the blockchain. Uh, my question relates to that in, in the sense of are, are however many tokens we're holding going to be the exact same amount when we switch to a coin? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Um, the exact answer for that, I'm not sure. We're definitely going through all possibilities and seeing what the pros and cons are to each implementation. But either way, just know that it won't really affect much if there is a, uh, a, a dilution or uh, the other way around of shares. I'm not sure exactly uh, what the numbers are. I don't think we've actually decided on it yet. We're definitely going over all possibilities. So it, there is a chance, but I don't know right now. But either way, just rest easy knowing that it doesn't change any of the math or any of that at all. So it would be more for uh, aesthetic reasons, <laughs> not having trillions of coins. If it is happening, I, I, I do not know that. But that was a good question, definitely. And that's a question a lot of people have been wondering, too. Uh, we're going to have to wait for the wizard to speak on that to get some yeah, clear, clear answers. Yeah, because, you know, I, it, depending on how, however much anyone invests, they are bought as a token. You know, hopefully it's still the same value on t as it moves to the blockchain. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, no, it it would be. So like, even if uh, these are not like no numbers or anything, this is just an example. But say it got reduced by ten times, like the, the supply to be reduced by ten times. If that if that happened, you could expect the price to increase by the same amount. Yeah, you, your your the value of your holdings won't change if we migrate over. Those will stay the same. Okay. And all the math for reflections will too, because the 
Yeah, your your bag shrinks, but so does the total supply. So it, it actually produces the same math. How are you doing? Uh, positive. Entropy? Good, good, good. So I I heard on on the Twitter, uh, not really AMA yesterday, and on the same AMA questions from people wondering if there's going to be a way to get people uh maybe new to crypto um spending and using it without the the fees you know small microtransactions uh things like that um how much would it slow down the network to allow like a wallet say under a hundred dollars they have a slider that turned off tokenomics or put it in the exclude function i know there are wallets that are excluded um but could you like say and anyone that wanted to that had under a hundred or a thousand dollars or something to turn that off and exclude themselves? They would basically they would pay the ten percent to get get the tokens in their thing, but maybe they just want to pay for burgers or they want to send money to uh, someone in Gambia. They don't want to pay and then lose the ten percent again. But you also wouldn't want a whole bunch of people doing that, so you'd want to limit it to a, a small amount, like microtransactions. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, I don't know exactly if that's the plan, but all I do know is the bridges that are being created will open up a lot of opportunities such as this because so like, like Ethereum and some of the other bridges won't have the 10% on them. So it'll definitely open up the ability for microtransactions more so, I'd say. I, I don't believe that that will be an option on, on Binance Smart Chain, however. I could be wrong. Okay. But okay. If, if I had to guess, I would say we are going to push the utilization of bridges to allow for things like that. And uh, and keep BSC as the uh, reflection hub for for Safe Moon. Right, right. Okay, thank you. All right, great question. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Okay, awesome. I'll I'll make this really quick. First off, thanks for letting me come up, and uh, thanks for all the work you guys are doing. Just a quick question on regarding exchange. I know that's far out into the future here, but um, I was just more curious. Is it is the team planning on making it like a Dex? Like pancake swap or sushi swap, or is it more like a centralized exchange, like Binance or Kraken or something to the sorts? I think a, a beautiful mixture of the both. Um, we'll need we'll need a certain level of centralization if we're gonna have cryptonomics uh, be a thing, but we're definitely trying to look for a beautiful mixture. Of it. It, it'll be interesting. I'm excited for more information to come out about it. But that is a good question. But in order to achieve full cryptonomics on tokens that do not have uh tokenomics built into their code it will have to have some degree of centralization such as binance and kraken okay awesome i appreciate the response i'm stoked now thanks yeah for sure uh rockamania hey gentlemen how are you doing can you hear me yep perfect uh probably like three very quick questions safe moon mark how old are you i'm 21 See, somebody said 17. I'm like, well, you sound like a little <laughs> older 17. Anyways, no, yeah. if you were 17, I'd be like, go. wow, more. And maybe gentlemen can answer the main question. It's regarding the wallet. I don't know how involved you are. I'm probably pretty involved. But did you guys both listen to Papa, I think it was yesterday, on the Twitter spaces? I only joined for the second half. So gotcha. I missed Okay. Of it. Okay. So the caller said, would there ever be a wallet release uh, without Simplex, Buy Button, Apple Pay? He, and Papa's response, this is word for word, I wrote it down. There's a great chance a lot of the features will not be there in version one because typically in an app release development cycle, you will have minimal viable product, uh, just the product that gets you off the ground. So we are shooting for a feature complete release. We will at least have a product. And also in the beta test, we are not going to release everything in the first wave of course not they're not going to have a lot of stuff on there that's going to be later down the line but what's your gentleman's thoughts on this will there be a simplex buy button uh definitely will be eventually i'm not sure if it's going to be on release uh that that was a question that i've seen pop up and go around a lot i i, yeah. genu I genuinely don't have the answer for if or if not that's going to be the case but just know that that's that's one of the biggest pushes that we're going for. Yeah. So as soon as it is a, uh, an ability, it's going to be on there. I guarantee that. Gotcha. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yes, hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. That's a question, man. Okay. Uh, my, my question is, uh, can we expect a uh, safe phone debit card to be released end of July along with wallet, at least a virtual card? Um, that, that wasn't announced anywhere, so I wouldn't expect it. But it would be nice if that was the case. Uh, I would wait for the team to give a final announcement on when that's coming out. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we got a new guy up here. Do you have a question? Hey, can you hear me? Yep. 
Yeah, okay, great. Uh, greetings from Germany, first of all, and uh, greetings to the Crypto Talk group. And um, Seymour Mark, I'm really curious like, how they reached out of you, uh, out to you, how they uh, got into contact with you, and how was your first uh, reaction to this, to be on the team? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So I uh, I just started making uh, YouTube videos going over the math behind it. Uh, I didn't really think I was going to get approached by the team at all, but it, it was in the back of my mind as a really fun possibility that could happen. And uh, it, on, it started out by being reached out to be a, a Reddit mod, and uh, I joined that and um, got to talk with a lot of the people in the community. Uh, from there, I had a meeting with, with Papa that we just started talking about stuff, and John came in. It, it was a really nice... Uh, it, it was really cool, and they, they basically were like, welcome to the team. And that's how I knew officially, and that's when I let out my, my tweet about it. And it, it was okay. crazy. I was, uh, I was definitely a little starstruck, and I didn't have many, many words to say. <laughs> but it was yeah, awesome. It sounds, yeah, it was sounds, like a, sounds like a, a fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, it really is, man. <laughs> okay, and the, and the following question is like, um, so uh, State Moon wants to be internationally represented, and they have an office now in, in, in Great Britain. They have some, they will have most probably some offices in Gambia. So is there any roadmap to be like uh, like offices all over the, the world? Or is it like, okay, we will have our focus headquarters in London, in the US, and maybe Gambia, and then from Africa onwards? Or how is it going on? Um, I don't, so I don't know exactly, but if I had to guess, I would say they're, they're opening up headquarters where they're gonna be staying most of the time. And so there's a lot of the, uh, a lot of the teams in the UK and the rest are in the U.S. mostly. So I, if I had a guess, I would expect to see one in the Gambia because the team's going to be going down there a lot for, the, for our relations with them. I would, I'd definitely expect the one in the U.K. to remain, and I'd expect one in the United States at some point, but I'm not sure about any beyond that. Okay, thanks. Keep on the good work. Bye. Before you pull somebody else up on stage, I, there's a flood of next questions, and I have a few picked out if you want to try and answer yeah, some of yeah. those. Uh, one guy asks, what is your expectation for the volume once the wallet is released? So uh, I, the, the wallet's essential. Um, I, I, don't, I can't give an exact uh, prediction on where the volume will go, but I don't necessarily think that the, that the wallet itself is going to bring a lot of volume. I think Simplex will bring a crazy amount of volume, the exchange will, and will, as will the blockchain. It's not that we wouldn't be able to have these things without the wallet, but the wallet's definitely an integral first step in many ways to set us up for greater volume. Yeah, this is the, the wallet's huge. The, the wallet is integral into setting everything up for the future. Secondary question was, do you know anything or have anything to say about tokenomics phase two? As of right now, uh, we're going over a bunch of uh, pros and cons for various implementations. It's kind of in a, in a discussion phase. There's a, couple, uh, there's a couple things we could do to achieve it in the short term. But we're mainly just trying to weigh that against what would be the optimal solution in the long term. So it's still an area of discussion, but it's not something we've forgotten about or something we're taking lightly at all. That's still that's still big on the priority list. Safeman Michael's in here. He uh, he raised his hand. I sent him an invite. I'm not sure if he's trying to jump up, jump in still or not. Sapasu. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. Uh, thanks again, guys, for all the work you're doing. My question is, uh, there's a few public facing members of the team, which is great, they've been doxxed. Do you have any idea how big the dev team is, which is to say how many people are working on deliverable products, whether the blockchain, wallet, exchange, Gambia? Uh, I, don't have a, I don't have an exact number, but I know that the team is pretty split up into different sections. So like, uh, there's wallet people that work on the wallet and there's people that work on the website. Um, I, I don't have an exact number for how many there are, but the, we're definitely growing the team pretty quickly. To, to so have it's more, more than just the, the few names that we know. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. There's definitely a good amount. If you're just talking Great. like in terms of website, seeing like a handful of names on the website, it, there's more people than that that work underneath them. Those are just the key guys who have doxed themselves for transparency. That's awesome. Thank you. Yep, for sure. How's it going, Michael? You have something to say? Guys, I'm an idiot. I'm sorry about that. I, uh, I didn't see the invite up at the top. No, I don't no really know how this all works. <laughs> Sorry, uh, but I appreciate you bringing me up. And uh, I also have to say, what's going on, my Safe Moon friends, my Safe Moon family? <laughs> um, I got a lot of questions from people watching on my live stream on YouTube right now. So, do you guys mind if I ask like four or five questions right now, or should we wait till later? Um, that, that's fine. You can ask a few questions. Maybe it'll answer some of the other people's that are waiting. Trying to get through all my questions. Okay. So I, I guess while we're talking about the bridge, at least for my audience, it seemed there seemed to be some sort of confusion. They had some high expectations of 
transaction volume just multiplying 10 times, 100 times with, with the single bridge. Um, <laughs> could you just go into a little detail about the benefits of the bridge and, and why they should still look at it with an optimistic point of view here and for the bridges to come in the future? Um, in my video, I even, I even said I, I didn't expect the bridge to be a massive volume catalyst. Uh, it's more of an infrastructure catalyst. It, it sets us up to not only scale way, way better, but also just raises the number of uh, direct use cases that we can, we can have uh, for now and in the future. And uh, the, the bridge setup, we're still, we're still perfecting and optimizing it. But soon, uh, I, I expect, especially with the addition of other bridges, we should see not necessarily a lot more volume, more things to do with your safe moon. Uh, and if you can you can buy NFTs with your safe moon. You can stake with your safe moon. You can vote with your safe moon. There, there's going to be other use cases that come up and uh, around eventually. At the end of the day, the, the bridge listings, it's not necessarily just like a volume catalyst as say the exchange, but it sets us up so we can provide use cases easier and that we can scale better. So even if there's a bunch of transactions going on on BSC that uh, we won't be able to not buy or sell our safe moon. I don't know if any of you guys remember from the last bull run we had, uh, we actually shut down some of the nodes at BSC because of all the transactions we were doing. And so many transactions were failing. None were getting through at all. People couldn't buy, people couldn't sell. And, and it was really weird and it was scary because we were still early. We didn't even have any exchanges we were on. That was just from, just from people buying. So. It, the bridges are definitely exciting and needed, but not necessarily in terms of a volume standpoint, if that helps at all. Definitely, definitely helps. And uh, I think that, I think that uh, clarifies some of the benefits for sure. Uh, the next question that I'm getting a lot of is cryptonomics, and it has to do with the exchange. So what is stopping other exchanges from implementing cryptonomics? And yeah, I guess that's the question. I mean, there's multiple forms of it, but that would be the question. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's a that's pretty much the thing in DeFi is the fact that everything's public and open source, so people can just copy things. It, it, that's definitely a, a thing that could happen. I, I, I have been told, I don't know how true this is, that there is some legal um, standpoint we have done to protect ourselves from that happening. Uh, I would wait until more info is released on that before I say anything officially, but that's definitely been a thought in our minds, and we're definitely working towards making sure it would be harder to just copy and paste us as opposed to anyone else per se. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and then I know that we talk, I know you said you can't talk much about the trust or about the wallet, um, saving wallet, but do we see a future potentially where there can be some sort of transfer from wherever we hold our safe moon now to the safe moon wallet without the 10% fee? Yeah, that's definitely, that's, that's definitely an area question. of, uh, yeah, okay. It's definitely an interesting area and a, a big a big thing we are trying to figure out how to do optimally. Uh, I don't necessarily know if it will happen immediately or at all, but that's definitely one of the bigger uh, hows that we're trying to solve right now. And there's a there's a bunch of good ways that we we have to to do it. So I would say that that's a big push for us. We don't want people to <laughs> right. lose ten percent just to hold on our wallet. That's not that wouldn't be optimal. Right. Okay. Perfect. And then um, the last question I'm getting. I don't know if you guys would know the answer to this, but it goes back to the CERTIC audit and if those issues are still being addressed that were brought up, those vulnerabilities that were brought up in the CERTIC audit. Uh, yep, they are being addressed. They can't be changed right now because uh, you can't change code on the blockchain. But the, the right. issues that were brought up in the audit are, uh, we acknowledge what they are and we acknowledge um, what can be done to prevent certain things from happening. and. Uh, there's definitely a plan in place to uh, address all of those in the near future, but I can't go into detail on that now. Awesome. I don't want to take everyone's time, but I appreciate you guys awesome. letting me up here. No, yeah, it was nice to talk to you, Michael. All right, I'll be talking to you soon. How's it going, The Tank? Hey, how you guys doing? Appreciate you taking the time to answer some questions today. But um, I have two quick questions, and one of them I think has come up quite often, and it's really related to all the exchanges that have not been uh, uh, providing tokenomics for the burn. So will we get to a point where we'll try to, you know, burn tokens that have not been burned because of this process just to do a catch up? Is that going to be something that they're going to do in the future? I know they've said no more manual burns, 
But is that something that they're possibly thinking about? Ideally, that would be awesome. At the end of the day, that would be up to the exchanges themselves to decide if they want to do that, which capitalistically speaking, they probably wouldn't. They'd want to keep the money for themselves, but that that, that would be amazing. And I, I hope some of the exchanges feel the need to do that in the future, but I don't think it's necessarily something that will require at all. But we are working to fix fix the issue altogether, so that won't need, that won't even need to be necessary in the future. Okay, awesome, awesome. And then I had one other quick question, and this one might be a tough one to answer. And you know, I'm not as familiar with the founder side of Safe Moon. I'm just familiar with the executive team. Um, but you know, where's a lot of our financing coming from? You know, I, I have a background in trading, and I've been trading equities for years now. And you know, I'm able to look up 10Ks and understand how companies are funded and where the money's coming from, especially to go on trips and travel and you know, work on these big projects and support the teams that you have to support, there's usually some type of financial backing. And I'm wondering if you guys can provide some type of detail on that. And maybe if it has been provided in the past, I just missed it. Um, I, pers I personally don't know that. I would say that might be more of a Vino question, but if yes. I had to guess, we had, we yes. had some fundraisers at the beginning and uh, reflections are pretty uh, hefty if you, if you hold a lot of safe moon. Uh, that those would be two guesses for myself. But what were you saying, Bino? As you said, there, there's definitely some aspects I don't know the full answers to on that. But I do know that one thing I'll mention that we are not, we by holding Safe Moon are not technically investors. We are holders. We are in a separate category. They have investors towards the company that help towards that end, which is completely separate from us being holders with the token. So that is one avenue on that. I know there's a couple other. I don't know if I'm allowed to speak to what they are. So I would say back burner that question for a week. I'll find out what I can say on the matter and come forward with more information next week. Okay, perfect. Thanks, guys. Yep, thank you. Uh, Adrian, did you just come up? Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, Safe Moon, Michael, uh, kind of alluded to uh, one of my questions. I just basically, can you confirm or deny any connection to Elon Musk's owl tweet from a long time ago. And it's always on the YouTube videos. It's always speculation. Can we just get a denial that it's not a tweet? I'll, I'll confirm it has nothing to do with Elon's owl tweet. Got you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks for doing that. I was going to make him keep, keep guessing. <laughs> I don't mind making him guess, but I, I do want to. I didn't know Elon even had tweet so i'll just i'll yeah, that, right that was news to me too there's just a lot of people saying that the owl is a connection which i don't think it was but you guys just <laughs> confirmed that one basically. person has correctly speculated the owl yet across all of discord and other services has given awesome. some good ideas though definitely all the uh all the theories you know they're definitely all ideas that the team can consider at the end of the day just coming up with theories for where we could go in the future is never a bad thing awesome thanks for answering the question you got any uh, question, Ace? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I may have missed a little bit. Um, I was gone for the last 10 minutes, but I was just wondering if, are people going to be able to get their safe move from other wallets to the safe move wallet without the 10% burn? Uh, that, that's something we are actively looking into and uh, should be a pri and is a priority for us. Right, you'll, ha you'll have an answer soon enough. We just can't say on details because of the wallet secrecy, but you will get that answer very soon. Yeah, I got you. Okay, thanks. Hi there. Um, sorry, a little starstruck. Uh, thank you for having me on. Um, question for Mark. Congratulations on making it to the Safe Moon team. But what exactly is your position? And other than your awesome YouTube videos, what are you doing <laughs> to the daily running of Safe Moon? I work for development and I'm also, uh, they labeled me content creator. So I will be continuing my YouTube videos and providing content there. But I also am working with uh, under Hank and with Papa now and then on development side, mainly in Solidity. So it, it's cool. I, uh, I can't really say which projects I've been working on so far, but it, it is really fun. And so anything development related and uh, content uh, related is my field, more or less. Very cool. Well, congratulations again. And thanks for answering my question. Awesome. Thank you. All right. We have some people that have been waiting for a while. What's up, Wally? Hey, guys. How's it going? So, Mark, I have a question about the bridges and PSafe Moon. I know you kind of talked about it. You, you kind of made it sound like it was a suggestion you would have for the team. But 
my understanding is P safe moon still gets reflections. And I believe y'all said that y'all might be stopping reflections for P safe moon. And also by doing that, the safe moon vault would technically then become basically a locked wallet. So it would yep. lower the circulating supply so everyone would get more reflection. Have you heard anything about that since that kind of update that came out? Are y'all still working on trying to do that, or has that been shelved? Uh, yeah, so that was originally my um, idea for the optimal way to run the bridges. I, I'm working with the team still, uh, running up all the pros and cons for what that would mean for the future, and uh, like basically what uh, what would conflict with that or with other implementations. That that's that's still my stance on it, but. I uh, I can't I don't know exactly where it's going right now, but that that's we're still trying to find the optimal solution for how to how to arrange the bridges. But yeah, okay. but right now, but right now you are right. There is there is still reflections on PSFM, and uh, I I don't know if that's changing, but if if we do know, we will let everyone know for sure. I uh, I was a little early in bringing that up to everyone. I didn't mean to cause any extra confusion. No, you didn't cause any confusion. It was just something I was really excited about. I'm not a huge fan of. How people on the Ethereum side can buy SafeMoon and never even pay the 10% tax and get reflections and can sell their reflections into a Ethereum. You know, it doesn't really help the coin and the idea of the reflections altogether. So I was happy with the suggestion. I just haven't heard anything about it down, you know, since yeah. then. So I was wondering if y'all were still exploring that idea at least. Uh, yeah, the, I, I'm I'm trying to push it if I can because I, I agree with you. I think that would be op optimal to reduce it, especially because it would then become a locked vault, as you were saying. So uh, it would increase the reflections for everyone on BSC as well. But I, I do not have an answer right now as to where we're going with that. But I am still pushing in that direction. But uh, uh, okay. like I said, uh, an official answer will be out uh, soon enough about where we're going with the bridges. But I I, I don't expect it to stay how it is right now oh. for for much longer. Okay, excellent. Can I just ask one more question? Yep. You, uh, it might have been right be before you were hired, but you were talking about updating your, your calculator, your website, and I love it. Is that something that you still might be working on, or have you just been really uh, yeah, busy I, now? I, I have been really busy with, um, with my projects and stuff, but I, I have been spending a, few, a, a little bit of time every other day uh, trying to touch up the website a little bit. It's definitely not where I wanted it to be. I threw it together in like three days so I could get the calculator up there for everyone. Been, it's been kind of mayhem since, but I, I have been giving it some attention, not as much as I should per se, but I, I have been really busy, so it's been hard. But hopefully over the next few days or weeks, I'll be able to have a good, a good chunk of time where I can really sit down and touch that up to make it nicer for everyone. Okay, that's good to know. Um, is there anything that, I know it's a wallet question, but is that something that might have a feature on there, kind of like your website where you can put it you know how you can put in your profile and it tells you how many reflections you've earned and so forth i'm assuming that's going to be on the wallet at some point right no comment but definitely uh definitely a, a, would be an amazing feature to have and a, a weird feature to leave out i'll say that okay hey thank you very for your time mark i appreciate it awesome you too man these are mark yep and um, you've mentioned the importance of reflection uh, sorry of volume quite a lot um, and it's touching on Diamond Hans's question earlier about the reflections come from where you actually bought SafeMoon. So what happens when people start buying from the SafeMoon wallet with Simplex? Does that then mean that all of the true reflections will come through or will it still be dependent on where you originally bought SafeMoon or how, how will it work then? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I believe that purchases through Simplex will trigger reflections on PancakeSwap. So you can expect... Uh, the, yeah, you can expect that to directly increase the volume on PancakeSwap, which will, uh, which is on the blockchain. So that helps all, uh, all holders more or less. Okay, and and just as a as a, a guide, uh, after the the bridge, the recent bridge was done. There was about twenty million a day in volume. How, what sort of percentage of that is PancakeSwap? Because I have no idea where to f even find that out. Um, uh, so I don't, I don't know exactly what percentage of it was on PancakeSwap for those days, but if you go to CoinMarketCap and you search SafeMoon, you can scroll down and it lists all the exchanges that have SafeMoon and their volumes, uh, respectively. I'm going to be adding a button into my site where you can just search PancakeSwap's volume automatically so it doesn't do, uh, it doesn't use global volume. So hopefully that will help. But yeah, you can, you can, um, you can just search online PancakeSwap SafeMoon volume and, uh, it would show up. It'll show up the over the last few days. That's great. Thank you. That clears it all up. Cheers.
Yep. All right. Let's see if uh, some more people want to come up really quick. We got a few minutes left. Hey, can you guys hear me? Uh, yep. All right. Awesome. First of all, thanks guys for taking the time to do this on a Sunday. Um, this question's from Mark. So um, I probably speak for a lot of people out there that Mark, your initial videos was what, at least for me, gave me the aha moment on reflections and what really the opportunity here is for safe moon uh, long term. And with your recent position and how busy you are, do you have some new videos that you will be releasing? And if so, can you give us a sneak peek on some of the content that you're going to be releasing for those new videos? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm definitely not slowing down on videos. I'm sorry. Yeah, it has been about a week since my last one. So I apologize for the wait. I, I have been really busy, but I do have uh, I do have a few videos I'm working on right now. And to give you a hint, uh, it'll be going over what wallets really are and what we can reasonably expect from the SafeMoon wallet just based on those facts alone, just based on what wallets are, how they interact with things, and uh, yeah, basically that. And I was going to do a separate one for the exchange a little, a little down the road. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, especially for all the new people that will be coming in. There's, you see a yeah. lot on Twitter and Discord. There's just it's SafeMoon's the first crypto they bought, so there's, just, there's a lot to get your mind wrapped around, especially on the math side. And you do a yeah. great job kind of bringing that down, so I think that's, that's great. So the wallets do have a lot of areas of confusion too, so I'm hoping it'll clear up a lot. People yeah, seem to think sure. that you actually hold coins on a wallet, but that, that's not the case. You don't actually hold your coins on a wallet. Yeah. Your coins only exist on the blockchain. A wallet's just a way to, to ask the blockchain how many coins you have and send them. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll be breaking it down a little further than that, but that, that's mainly the approach I'm going for in my next video. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. You got a question, Sniper Wolf? Uh, hi guys, do you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so my question is, there is a possibility in the near future to do a denomination uh, like uh, 1000 to 1, and uh, how will it uh, influence the price? Thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a possibility. I can't confirm or deny the ratio that we're going to be moving. Um, I'm guessing you, you were asking when we're moving from Binance Smart Chain to our own blockchain, that migration. I, I can't I can't exactly speculate on the exact number, but it won't affect it, it'll affect price the same ratio that it's changed. So if it's a thousand to one of a change, there would be an a thousand per at times increase in price. But it, it's not going to do anything drastic to anyone's anyone's holdings. So you'll have the same USD value of your Safe Moon bag after the merge as you did before the merge, if that helps. So however, if there is a uh, if there is a dilution of uh, or the other way around of safe moon tokens the price will reflect that so your actual value of your holdings won't change at all how's it going truth hey can you guys hear me yep awesome awesome uh so thanks for all you guys do uh mark my question for you is actually a two-parter how excited are you versus before you officially joined the team knowing what you know now a lot a lot more yes okay it was and, mostly uh, the uh, yeah the ability to to meet people like face to face, be able to to speak with the developers, and uh, just learn that they're great guys, you know, great morals. Everything is everything is as it seemed before. That 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 was the main. Uh, that's what gave me a lot of confidence, at least. Okay, awesome, awesome. So, what would be the one thing in your mind that maybe keeps you up at night, or the one thing that this just doesn't pan out because of fill in the blank? So, are you asking for a potential problem? I see, or um, yes. Like the one thing that could uh, destroy all our hopes and dreams in Safe Moon Army. So there's none that I could think of that I couldn't also think of a way to fix, if that makes sense. Any, any dastardly things that come up in the future, I, I'm very confident I have an ability to, uh, to, to, to mitigate. Whether it be through smart contracts, through implementing things a certain way. There's always a way we can stay on top of the problems, but there are some problems that we're seeing today that we're still working on fixing. So you could count one of those as them, such as like tokenomics or something, but just know that I'm not sleeping until we have, a, we have an implementation that works. And I, I feel as though I have an idea of how to, how to solve at least a lot of the major problems we see today and that me and the team will be able to think up ways to solve problems in the future. So I wouldn't say there's any, anything glaring that you, you guys should worry about. Everything that's a problem now is realized and on its way to being fixed. Beautiful, man. You just made my day. Thanks so much. <laughs> awesome. Nice talking to you. You too. Hello, guys. Do you hear me? Yep. Nice. First of all, greets from Germany. 
Um, my question is, it's um, also related to your homepage, Save More Mark. Um, have you thought about it to implement something in the wallet, like on the home screen when you open up the wallet, to see those stats like burn this amount, this reflection? So something like what we can see on your homepage, but it's implicated in the in the wallet. Uh, I can't comment on what's in or not in the wallet, but that would definitely be a great implementation to add. And I'm I'm sure it's on I'm sure it's on the developers' minds. Sounds great. Thanks. Okay. Again, one more dude up here. Donald Duck. Hey, I appreciate it. Um, I, I feel like my turn uh, on here, I, I already had a question already answered, but I'll just kind of allude to it. You mentioned about when we do the switch from tokens to coins that the value of the safe moon will remain the same no matter what the ratio is on the conversion, correct? Not not necessarily the price of it, but the value of your holdings. Yeah. Okay. So so that's what I'm saying. I guess so. The the fact that you know we're worried about getting a thousand to one or ten thousand to one. That's a moot point, correct? Yeah. It, it does nothing to reflections or the value or anything like that. You, you're uh, the value of your bag stays the same. The reflections you can expect for volume stays the same. Uh, it would just be an aesthetic look. It would be um, if it does happen. If it was a thousand to one. It would be just so people aren't owning trillions of coins, more or less. Which if makes that is sense happening. because that seems like it would, it would actually have a positive effect on the. Yeah, coin it would just tidy. It, it would just tidy things up a little bit. There's not, in terms of uh, actually doing the merge, it wouldn't change any of the math at all. Right. Perfect. Listen, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank. Thank you all. Though. Great questions. Uh, I hope I was able to go through most of them. Sorry, I don't have more time here today. I mean, if there's any uh, glaring questions in the uh, event chat, if people are upset that they didn't get answered, uh, I'll answer one more. All right, awesome, dude. I was just messaging Venno. I was like, dude, you got to get me up here to talk to him quick. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, so many DMs. Sorry. <laughs> so, so I'll tell you, my, my first goal when I first got into this was 500 million. And uh, I, I think I'm at like 7.65 billion now. Yeah, it's all because of uh, Mark's videos. I think I've, I've dropped like 40K on it because I bought some at the all time high. but. So, Mark, knowing what you know now versus what you knew before you were actually part of the team, and I have two quick questions. This is the first one. Um, you said that your bag originally you wanted around $5 billion. Now that you know some of the inside stuff for beginners that don't necessarily have the amount of money that I do to invest, um, do you think that they could get away with $1 billion or $500 million? Do you have a different size bag that you would suggest that's, hey, this would be a good bag for you if you wanted to start that you know, generational wealth or to maybe help them leave their job? Or um, Do you have any insight on that now that you've seen the inside working? Uh, yeah, so um, I, I can't really I – don't, I don't want to tell anyone what, how much money they should spend or what, what they should have, but yeah. it's, it's really important to uh, – to, to to just do the math, basically, to do it on uh, you can do it on my website. I, I lay it out evenly, easily for you, and uh, you just have to you have to weigh the risks of what do you think the volume will be after the exchange, after the blockchain. Um, a, a good a good way to do that is to look at other coins that have a similar ecosystem and see their volume. Uh, plug that into the calculator. Ch check out the reflections. See what see what seems right. You know, yeah. if, if, if uh, you get $50 per day, per billion dollars of volume, per billion safe moon that you own. So, yeah, a, bi a billion is a great mile marker to reach. It definitely uh, definitely is an easy number to use for the math. But, yeah, yeah it, to, to each their own. I, I'm not going to be one to say you should buy this many of anything. But my, my, my personal goal, I'll tell you, has doubled. Ah, okay. So I've been kind of going after your goal, and I hit my $5 billion and then I haven't stopped. I'm at 7.65 now. So No, so, good um, for you. Um, and then my last question that I had for you, um, one thing that I see value in, and I don't know if the Safe Moon team can do this or not, but I haven't seen much as far as an actual advertisement campaign on areas such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, you know, all these places. Is there a possibility for them to use, I don't know, portions of the liquidity pool or something like that to pay for a large scale uh, campaign ad once they launch the wallet and the exchange like that to make sure it's reaching millions of people that have not even heard of SafeMoon. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, definitely waiting until we have some tangible products first, uh, like you said, like the wallet and stuff. But once those are achieved, I, I can, yeah, I, I would expect to see some SafeMoon ads popping up.
Awesome. There's definitely already plans that are in the works, but again, like he said, we're waiting for the right mm -hmm. timing and things and products before we execute those plans. Cool, cool. Well, hey, Mark, you you uh, you've helped make my dreams come true because now I'm a large holder because of your video. So I appreciate that. I just want to make sure that on behalf of the entire Safe Moon Army that they all know that you guys kick ass every day and you're helping us reach our dreams. So thank you again. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming up, man. All right. Later. All right, everyone. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to be posting. Uh, I believe some some people in here recorded the audio. If you wouldn't mind uh, DMing that to me, I was going to throw it up on my YouTube in case anyone missed it. But yeah, uh, great talks. I hope I, I hope I answered a lot of the the main questions that were going around. Well, it's been fun, guys. Nice talking to all of you. Have a good one.